Okay, guys, welcome to the Hangout Show. Uh, we've got a, a special show today. It's uh, Talking Movies with the lovely actress, Miss Sandra Stevens. Give it up, guys. All right. Um, my name is Sandra Stevens. I'm your show host, and I am indeed an actress. I don't live in Hollywood. I live in Utah, where the acting industry is quite big, actually. And I wanted to start off the first show with uh, the question, who is your favorite movie villain? Um, so we're going to just go down the line, and somebody's on the phone, so Marin, you're first. Ah, uh, yeah, hi. Hi. Favorite movie villain, Marin? Snidely Whiplash. Uh, I don't have any one, actually, to be honest. Okay. okay. Joseph? Uh, Joseph? Favorite movie villain? Oh, um... There's a lot. Maybe the general chat will not. You gotta Maybe talk a little louder. Uh, hold on. Uh, Maybe the Joker off. Uh, Which Batman? Uh, Batman Begins. I think. Okay, the one with um, Heath Ledger as a Joker. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's Earl. That's mine too, actually. Really? Oh uh, yeah, I think he played that part. Tremendously. Out of all the movies you've ever seen. Yeah. You were yeah. the best villain. Dwayne. I would say Tom Cruise when he jumped on Oprah's couch. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking movies, so that's this doesn't count. Alright, well in um in that case, I would say um Venom and Spider-Man. Okay. Crystal. Uh, favorite Natalie movie villain. Uh, Natalie Whiplash. What movie what is that? Natalie Do-Right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so Marin, have you thought of anybody? No, I haven't yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Miranda, I mean, do you have a favorite movie villain, Miranda? Okay. Well, while you, while you guys are thinking, let me just explain. A movie villain doesn't have to necessarily be the bad guy. It's the person that creates the conflict within the movie. So, Joker, yeah, he's he was Heath Ledger was awesome as the Joker in Batman. But a villain can be an inanimate object. For instance, a city. Uh, it can be drugs. It can be anything. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a person. It's not like the black and white movies where uh, you could tell the favorite movie villain or the, the villain was wearing black, right? And the good guys wore white and the music changed when the villain came on. It's not like that anymore. Sandra? Uh, yes? Uh, we've got a guy on YouTube called um, Dylan Bob. He says his favorite villain actor was Anthony Hopkins. Oh, in Silence of the Lambs. That's correct. Yes. He's <laughs> a lot of people's favorite. And um, that actually is an awesome movie. Um, yes. There is a funny story about Silence of the Lambs, and that is Jamie Gum, who played um, the killer, and uh, the girl that was in the well, actually we were friends on the set. So they would eat together, um, 
they they had all kinds of fun together until it was time you know until that board collapse and uh, you got to be on you know so that's kind of a funny story about Silence of the Lambs um, my favorite mo movie villain is Michael Corleone because um, because in the Godfather series he's a reluctant villain he's actually the hero of the movie but at the same time in the Godfather 2 he kills his brother so um, that makes him a villain uh, my other favorite villain is Cruella de Vil from <laughs> 101 Dalmatians <laughs> um, because she um, I mean the name says it already Cruvella Devil um, uh, Disney made a bunch of great villains they're, they're great at making villains um, in Taxi Driver Who's the villain in Taxi Driver? Have you guys ever seen that movie? Taxi Driver, classic with Robert De Niro. Le uh, Queen Latifah, wasn't it? No, no, no. I haven't seen it in a long time, so. Taxi uh, Driver is a movie from the, it's, it's from the it's 70s. From the 70s. Okay, so we're talking about the original. Okay. Um, what's his name? I don't know. can't think of it right now. It's the city. It's city. Oh, oh, well, uh, okay, taxi driver. Um, <laughs> thinking. New York. Travis, Travis, Travis is in New York. And his whole thing, his, throughout his whole monologue throughout the movie is how much he detests New York. So when he ultimately goes to shoot the senator and misses and then goes and rescues um, oh, what's her name he rescues the girl it's against New York City so New York City is the villain so that's what I meant by a villain can be an inanimate object it doesn't necessarily have to be a person so what are some other movie villains that you guys like? Does it does a villain necessarily have to be from a thriller? I or like Transformers. From, or from an action movie. I like Transformers a lot. But um let's see. Cars, yeah. Cars. But let's see, we can, we, okay, if we're talking about people, then, let's see, I probably have to say, um, Russell Crowe is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 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 Uh, we have a Bob Dylan on YouTube who says, um, sorry, Dylan Bob, he says, Bob Hoskins in the movie Unleash. Yes. Yeah, that's a scary also, character. Yeah, and he also says Robert De Niro in uh, Casino. Yes. One more, one more. Okay. We've got a shout out for um, Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. in The Terminator 1. Right, well. but was he really the villain in Terminator 1? Or was he the hero? I'd put him as a hero, Tricky. to be honest. Tricky. And someone on YouTube's asking you if um, anyone on in Pulp Fiction is a villain. Anyone in Pulp Fiction? If anyone um, in Pulp Fiction, yeah. Is everyone well, in Pulp Fiction? A <laughs> bad guy. I think the worst guy in Pulp Fiction is the uh, Harvey Keitel character, the clean the cleanup guy yeah he, he just has no feeling at all he is just yeah. pure sociopath get the job done I have no feelings about this and um, 
you know, Vincent and his partner kind of freak out over it, which shows that they have some feelings, even though they are killers. But this Harvey Keitel character that comes in and just says, you know, douse him in acid and just clean it up. Yes, you know, right. no feeling. We've got so, also someone. We've also got someone in Spain, a Hector. Again. Excuse me. Someone, a guy called Andrew, who says Hannibal Lecter. Yes, Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter is kind of an amalgam of every scary sociopath out there, isn't he? He he yeah. is a. But the real villain in that movie is. Jamie Gum, who plays the killer. So, wasn't it? What wasn't it in the movie called Wild Bill? Wild something like that. Yeah, in the movie he's called Wild Bill. He is the real villain of the movie, the movie not yeah. Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, Hannibal Lecter was was the mind frame of the movie. I think he's the one that was with all these uh, you know, puzzling. Question that you yeah. have to figure out, you know. Yeah. So he was an antagonist, but not a villain. So. Sandra, what, was that, what was that film with um, Samuel Jackson um, and Bruce Willis? He, well, Samuel plays a, a, a villain in that film. I can't remember the name, but it's been... It's been Is it been one like, of those Die Hard movies? No, I think it's um, where Samuel um, is one of these uh, comic book hero types. Oh, movies. okay, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I can't it's the name a before. Night M. Shyamalan movie. Um, okay. Yeah. I think I think another it's great the movie film. he made right after uh, I See Dead People. That's right. That's right. I I think another yeah. bad villain is is Joe Pesci in Casino. Oh Mary yeah, Joe just, Pesci. Uh, Mary just mentioned in the chat. What's that movie, Marion? Would you it's in City, but which character, Marion? Marion? Uh, I you guys would just mention the movie, and I just you know pass it in. You know, it might be wrong. I don't know, but that's Sin City. What's it called? Sin City, but that's too. They, that's a new, no, much that's a newer movie. Uh, newer movie, yeah. yeah. So uh, no, the movie he's talking about is a M Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan. movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think, the Indian. I think how, about Jig, how about Jigsaw? Mm -hmm. the um, Jigsaw. Yeah, but you know, horror is a whole different area as as villains go. <laughs> Yeah, but he 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 was a methodical killer. He he, he yeah. had it, he had it planned to. He didn't just go out and kill. I mean, he had developed, uh, devised, and all these things that you know took a lot of mind mind thinking in order to get it done right. I I think I think I think a villain like that is like an ultimate villain. You know, I mean, he he had to come up with some pretty ingenious mechanisms to kill someone. I mean, right. to have a face mask that's, that's called the snapper, where unless you find that key or the correct answer, they just whack your face wide open. So, there's that, I mean, so that's a methodical drop. killer. Yeah. That's a, a very methodical there, there's killer. There's the film that I was thinking about. So Mary. just to mention the film that Earl was talking about, that's the... Um, the um, What's, what is that series called, Earl? With Jigsaw. And the movie we were talking about earlier with Bruce Willis it's, it's and Saw. Saw, it's Saw. The Saw what's the, what's movie. The five, yeah. Yes. And when the movie one, we were well, talking about earlier. Is one through six. But you got to think in the, the beginning of the movie, he was supposedly dying of brain cancer. That's right. What that's where it all. That's why I say he's the ultimate villain. He had the thinking, the the methodical thinking, 
and then he had all these plans. I only well, he, saw the first one. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, in the other, well, in the other, what, what, what? The thing that got me with Saw and Jigsaw is that he was all going after people who were doing wrong. That he, well, in his perception, was wrong. He wanted to make well, that's them the same right. The character in Seven, isn't it? Yes, you're right, actually. That's that movie, Sandra, that I couldn't remember. Um, Marion just typed it in the, in the chat. What's it called, yeah, Marion? it's Unbreakable. Uh, I was actually asking Marion. It's called Unbreakable. Thank you, Marion. Oh, yeah, well, with Samuel uh, Jackson and Bruce Willis, yeah. That's so Samuel the Jackson played uh, the, the, well, the villain in that who had that bone disease, that shattering bone disease. That's right, yeah. Yeah, that was a good movie. movie. Yeah, well, actually, that it was, was a good movie. movie. <laughs> Sorry, Sanjo, I just wanted to hear... Oh, that, that's safe. fine. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to throw in here that um, making movies is creating um, reality in the imaginary. So the character of the villain has to be believable. You have to be actually... Um, you have to be convinced that this is a really, really, really bad person, you know. Um, so when you throw that into the mix, um, you know, then you're you talking more about the characters, like the character in Seven, the killer in Seven. Who is killing people? Um, as first and attrition. Um, as attrition to the seven sins, seven deadly sins, right? But he is so convincing in it that um, um, that you believe that that he actually he actually that's 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 his whole belief and when you see him act in other movies the only thing you can see him in is as a killer in seven yeah so for instance there is a pride and prejudice with Colin Firth okay it was an early BBC series now forever in my mind the only Mr. Darcy alive is Colin Firth. Just like for some people the only James Bond is um, Roger Moore because that's the James Bond that I grew up with. So. I'm so sorry about that. I had a glitch in my system. Um, so, it, so when you talk about your villains, do you talk about them because you think they're the bad guy in the movie or because you believe, you actually believe their performance? Um, Sandra? Yes? Does Gollum in Lord of the Rings count? Of course. <laughs> oh. Yes. There you go. Yes. <laughs> cool. Um, Gollum plays an intricate part in Lord of the Rings as a villain, doesn't he? Because oh. he wants his precious. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> My precious. But, um, <laughs> one of my old hey, school uh, I'm just say one thing. My mom wanted to see you. She loves your acting. Oh well, thank her for me. I will. Has she seen me on YouTube or? Well, she's 51, so. <laughs> How does she know my acting? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> I don't know. She said uh, she remembers you and. Uh, okay. 
that's, that's great. Uh, well, Thank you very much. Came in. That's great. Thank you. I do have a movie coming out, and I'm not a villain in it. I'm actually um, a street lady, Saint Street. And if you follow us on uh, the Hangout Show, Google Plus One, or HangoutShow.com, or the Hangout Show on um, YouTube, then YouTube. you will get further updates on that. It's the Hangout Show live on YouTube. The Hangout Show live on YouTube. So, do any of you have any questions? You want to ask? Do you think you're wondering remember about? James Cagney, Sandra. Mm hmm. He was very good famous. bad guy. So was <laughs> Humphrey Bogard. That's right. <laughs> Gary Oldman a plays a very good bad guy. That's right. One of my all-time favorites. Gary. Uh, poor guy killed Nancy. That's right. Sid and Nancy, have you seen that? Mm -hmm. So what's your uh, favorite old film, Marion? My? Your, old, your, your favorite old time movie. Um, I would say Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Gone okay. with the Wind, okay. I think a lot of people have thrown as their favorite. That is mine. And I don't know. I used to watch a lot of old movies before Black and White. I didn't have time for that, you know, when I was younger. But for some certain reason, I just love to track away because, you know, I could make any excuses not to sit down and watch a great movie on a Saturday night when I didn't have anything to do and things like that, you know, and then have a So hot your favorite movie, your favorite villain would be Clark Gable then? No. I didn't see Red that. Butler. Well, like this, this is a problem. I don't, I don't have any favorite villains. You know, I just watch movies and I just let it slide. You know, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't make a romance image of any villain. I must say it that way. I don't know. Sandra. Yes. Can I ask you a question? Um, yes. What is your, what is your favorite movie? And how many times have you watched that movie? <laughs> you know what? Can I say something? I think the most favorite movie I, I've ever enjoyed in my life. I can't remember the name correctly, so if I'm saying it wrong, it's the first vampire ever made. I think it's called uh, Nosferatu. Nosferatu. I think that movie was made at that time so fantastic. It, it made plays it. in. It's. It was made in Holland. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I read about it, but I think it was made so well for the for the time because it it all, it, it I, I don't get scared with movies at all. I'm not uh, like a Uber Gideon kind of guy. Scared, of but at that time he scared me so much because he played this part so well because he didn't have that that the R K nines and all this other stuff. He had him in the front. And he looks so convincible in the movie that I was like, I was like, even to this day when I have watched it and I have put it in, I'm like, I'm so amazed at how he, how they made that movie at that time. So yes. In reference, I think I should really, really be honestly, not what I do. I think in reality that is my favorite villain because it was it was a silent film, but. It made it seem. It's silent. creepier because it is a silent film. It's creepier because it is a silent film, and the music that was yeah, played yeah. with it. Yeah, the piano it music, creepier. and then the then the the horn sounds that came with it made it yeah, just like yeah. every. And then he would show. Then the way they 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 added the effects of him just showing up, just like out of nowhere, you know. Where back then you would think, how were they able to figure that out? Where they figured it out, you know what I mean? It was like, wow, that was just fantastic, and it just it just wowed me. And to this day, I've seen vampire movies, all these other glittery people that like Twilight and all that, and I think it's just a bunch of fairies running around. <laughs> yeah, I so, hate uh, Twilight. Moving back, totally back to my again. question. Okay. 
Moving back to my back question. To you, back to Carl's question, what is my all-time favorite movie? Well, I have and, several. And, and how many times have you And how it? many times have I seen it? It is the 1997 version of Romeo and Juliet. And I have seen it so much that I can talk along with it. Wow. Does that, that answer your question? Yeah, that sounds as bad as me. My, my <laughs> time favorite movie that I love to watch every time it comes on is, I know this might be a bit embarrassing, guys, but it's The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen that movie over 50 times. <laughs> I, I, I have I seen, I, I think I have, my problem I own with Romeo and Juliet, so I... Uh, I have watched it more than 50 times, I have to admit. Um, okay. a, and a close second is Atonement. And, of course, The uh, Godfather. I, can, I cannot so. stop watching those movies. I have seen them so many times. I know the story so well. But to watch Al Pacino play Michael Corleone... It's just mesmerizing. Mm. Um, I've got someone on YouTube who reckons that Dark Vader was the ultimate bad boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, he was not. But I, I think more in a cartoonish way than a, a true character. Yeah. Because of the voice. Yeah. Which, the voice was done by James Earl Jones, which was, his voice is awesome, you know. Um, but um, I, I think, I don't know. I, I don't think Darth Vader is the ultimate bad guy of all time, no. I can't go with that. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't either. Um, he's not bad boy enough for me. Um, I think since Darth Vader, we have gotten so much more evil characters. Or um, if you take a movie like Requiem for a Dream, where heroin is ultimately the villain, um, when you watch a movie like that, then... Darth Vader really, you know, is nothing compared to that. Um, but ultimately, every villain goes back to Greek tragedies and Shakespeare. Um, and the villain always creates the conflict in the movie. So even if it's a comedy, there's a villain because he creates the conflict in the movie. There's That's no true. movie without a villain. That's true. That's true. So even in a drama, in a comedy, in, in it's definitely in an action movie, definitely in a horror movie, which is the most recognizable villains are in horror movies, but even in dramas... Even in comedies, you have to have a villain because a movie without conflict is a boring movie. Nobody wants to see it. You know, you're sitting there watching what? Nothing. Because you want to see yeah. something happen. You, you want see some to sort of conflict, don't you? So the conflict is the whole basis on what a script is built up on. Okay, so you start off with two or three characters and uh, a writer, and then slowly you start building and building and building. And where comes the conflict in there? So somebody has to be the bad guy. That's the reality of the movies. Somebody has to play the bad guy. And a lot of people don't like to play the bad guy. Some people love to play the bad guy. Some people are really good at it. Some people suck at it. Um, another thing is that if you play a character, 
you have to feel the character. You have to have those feelings. So, mm -hmm. so if a believable bad guy is probably in a really nasty place in his brain. So, like mm. Heath, Heath Ledger's character in Batman, he, he's a method actor. That means that he stays in character throughout the whole shooting of the movie. Okay, he doesn't mm -hmm. go home, take his pants off, take his makeup off, and is it is Heath Ledger again? He stayed in that character. Christian Bale does the same thing, but the danger is that you have to be able to recuperate your your humanity after that. So they were great, and and in the end, they killed him. Yeah, it's on the purple folder underneath the table. Sorry. So think about that. The next time you watch a movie, use your brains. Um, movie, movie. People make movies because a lot of times we we want you to think about stuff. We want you to believe our characters. Don't play funny. Don't play sad. Play the truth. Um, so, uh, the next time you go to the theater, get your popcorn, get your Coke, and, and then sit down and feel with that movie, you know, feel anger, feel sadness, feel laughter. That's what we um, get so paid to do. Yeah, I'm sorry. What, what is, what is the thing? Um, hold on now, hold on now. Sorry. Um, Sandra, on YouTube, we've got a guy called Andrew who says his favorite movie was um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest from Jack Nicholson. Yeah, and uh, Nurse Ratched is the, fil the villain in that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is an awesome movie. So is The Shining. So is Chinatown. There aren't many movies that Jack Nicholson did that are absolutely horrid movies. He's a good actor. He's a great actor. How about Javier Bardem in No Country for uh, Old Men? Yes. Now he scared the heck out of me in that movie. <laughs> that, that movie I thought of, I, I had to type it in and and realize because his method of acting was so quiet and his demeanor was so realistic that it made you feel that it did you know in my reality it made me feel like you know to run into this guy into the street would be like you know running into the devil himself you know it's like I felt the movie that's why I was so engulfed in no country for old men the book when I read the book, I was like, they actually, you know, did do a good job in, 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 in making him portray the movie correctly. But when he played that actor in No Country for Old Men, I was like, wow, man, this dude played this character just, just, just by the way of him, just by the way of him saying the flip of a coin. Yes. I mean, you know, that, he didn't. He didn't tell you you're gonna live or die. This, he just said, let's flip a coin and let's see what happens. You know, it, it, it's, it's it's what we call in the movie world a great. Um, what Javier Bardem did in No Country for Old Men is a great example of under underacting your character. He played it very deadpan. And sometimes overacting can cost you the role. It makes it unbelievable. So okay. you underact, and, um, and which is what he did, and it made it really believable. He was really deadpan. You know, I really don't care if I shoot you or not. Especially when he pulls the guy out of the car, puts the gun 
to his head and just shoots him right there by his car. That, Marion was saying she had a nightmare. She was saying that, she had a nightmare. It was, it was scary, yeah. wasn't it? He was yeah. scary. That's why I like that movie. What movie are we talking cool. about? No Country for Old Men. Oh, is that, okay. Is that we had a, a nightmare over Marion? Yes, I have. Yeah. But see the way really? that's why I liked it. He under he underplayed the acting on it. He was just more uh, methodical thinking, if if that's the correct terminology, in saying I'm not going to overact it. I'm just going to be this one guy with this one attitude, not too much to say, and just do what I have to do without giving forewarning. And so that's what made you enjoy that movie so much. What can you do about that movie, Mary? Um, I think it's because he went around and shoots the people, I think, because of the violence. I mean, uh, it didn't show mercy at all. You know? No, uh, there is no mercy in Javier Bardem in that movie. He was just um, very angry. I had person. to play the scene out in class where he goes to the girlfriend and um, and she knows her children are sleeping in the next room and she knows that so you know so you know that your children are in the next room you know you have a killer at your table and then he says well flip the coin and she's like why should I flip a coin why don't you just shoot me because she wants to save her children so I had to play that scene, and it it's it was really really intense to play that to that's get your emotion up there. Mm -hmm. and that's um, why I think I enjoyed it so much. It's because it it, it, it in a lot of movies, you, uh, as yourself being an actress, you, you know you want the person to be involved. You want the person to uh, the person watching the movie to actually. Uh, I, I, the way I see it is, I want to feel his emotions. Like, well, that's I what I'm. That's what I'm trying to explain. As actors, we get paid to feel, right? We don't get play, paid to play. As an actor in the theater, yes, you do. As an actor in film, in film, you're watching intimate moments that you're really not supposed to see. So, in order for you to to believe that the actors have to feel it for you so that you can feel it so you, that you can if you have a believable actor you will go along with them in the feeling all the way that, that's that's the way I felt because when when I was watching the movie at first it, it seemed so like at first I thought it was this, this is gonna be one of those other you know, shoot them up and all kinds of stuff. And as it progressed, I started feeling what he was thinking and what the process of, of mindset that I'm sorry, my granddaughter's crying. Uh, the the way he the way he was thinking and instead of just having a gun, the simplest of objects was an air tank with with uh uh, it's a cow gun. It's a cow gun, yeah, that, that pounder. And yeah, it's a cow and gun. I, it's a cow gun. And I'm thinking, this guy just walked around with a cow gun, didn't have to explain to you why he was going to kill you, walked up and just bang, you know? And it was like, and the way I thought of it, I was like looking, who? You know, I was like, wow, man, this guy's just thinking, just the way he's thinking, I was like, could I actually could I actually like have that non-emotional like no sense of emotion, no sense of feeling, just methodically walking? Around. Yeah, it just walk around and just to tell people, give me the answer I want to know, or I'm just gonna do it. it there's, there was yeah. no in between. There was just no in between. Yeah. And, and that's why I was saying the quarter thing was just like I think the quarter. The, the 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 way he did with the quarter was brilliant because in other movies they're always like I'm gonna pop you one or I'm gonna shoot you and all this he just gave them a simple yes or no yeah pick a side 
Yeah, and I love it when he's in the store and he tells the clerk, no, don't put that coin in your pocket. That's your lucky coin. coin. Yeah, because it just saved his life. <laughs> and that's a great part because I was thinking, this guy was one second away from being off the grid. Yeah. You know, that's why I kind of, I kind of revert, but in that movie, it just, it just, I was just like, just really into it. And if they ever, I, I know that the, the writer, the, 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 the one that wrote the book, has other series for it. And I hope they don't destroy it because it was such a great film. And, you know, such great films sometimes end up being redone remade. and then they remade and then they end up screwing it all up and it just ruins it for me. If they make another film about it, I don't think I want to watch it. I'll probably watch maybe a, uh, a few minutes of it and if it starts changing too much, I don't want to I don't want to ruin the first one because I enjoyed yeah. it that much. That's what I have about the girl with the dragon tattoo. Um I watched Loved this it. Loved I watched it. this Swedish movies. Uh with uh I think her name's Mara Rooney and I refuse to watch the Hollywood version because it will ruin it for me because she played it so brilliantly. And um, so a lot of Hollywood movies are remakes, but that's the topic for next week. Remakes. <laughs> Rehash. So uh, we have about 10 minutes left, I think, isn't it, Carl? That's correct. Uh, yeah. So, so do we have any more questions from YouTube? or? Uh, not from new YouTube, no, but I'd like to ask uh, Marin a question. Um, what movie would you like to see a remake of? A remake of? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, that's a very good question, I must say. Um, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If you, could, if you could remake a movie, what movie would it be? I think the story of my life. I don't know. For stuff, maybe I don't know. Okay. <laughs> what about you, El? I don't know. I've seen too many movies remade, and they end up screwing it up. Just like Silence of the Lambs. It's like the first one was so intense, yeah. and then they remade. They they did another one, and then did another one, and and didn't get it dumber and dumber. You think it was the enjoyment? Although they, uh, I did like Hannibal Rising, I thought that movie was brilliant. Yeah, Peter that Weber one was. Did a yeah. brilliant job on Hannibal Rising. Yeah, that, I yeah, I would agree with you on that. You know, because he he did. It it, it shows him as, as he's progressing into this. He it shows why he becomes Hannibal, you know, and yeah. I think that. The actor that he chose to play the young Hannibal was brilliant as well, um, who is a French actor uh, who also plays in A Very Long Engagement, uh, which is another brilliant movie. Um, just for all you Americans out there, don't just stick to American movies. Uh, movies are made Awesome movies are made in France and Sweden, all over Europe, in Japan, uh, in India, um, broad horizons, and, and watch foreign movies. Get used to the subtitles, the rest of the world is, um, and, and, and those movies can, can be brilliant. I saw a Swedish movie which was called... Um, as it is in heaven, which was about a director who who had a heart attack and he had to move to a small town, and and he changes the whole town because he starts to acquire, and and just stories about humanity, you know, not big Hollywood blockbusters. Um, uh, Sandra. Sandra. Yeah. Um, have you seen this movie called um, The Lovely Bones? I have seen yes. it. It's and I've read the book. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's 
It's a great movie. It's an unfortunate story, but it's a, a yeah, a great it's a movie. lovely movie. Actually, yeah. Sandra, I did see I, I did see the 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 Swedish part of the girl with the dragon tattoo, and I yeah. actually did like that better than the American version. Yeah, I thought I thought it had a lot more emphasis to it. There was more yes. emphasis to it than just than just uh, this girl trying to be. You know, well, this, and like, because she is such a strong actress, if you go see Prometheus, you'll notice that she outplays every actor in that movie. Can we just say um, hello to uh, the late arrival, Patrick? Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Patrick. Hello, sorry, hello, Patrick. Hello, you're right. Hello, sorry, I'm just keeping quiet. You know, I'm quite okay, interested. Mate. Yeah, okay, we'll I just. Um, before the movie ends, here in America, at the top of the box office, we have The Amazing Spider-Man, Ted, at number two, The Brave, at number three, Savages, number four, and Magic Mike, at number five. Movies that are opening this week are Ice Age, Continental Drift, Woo. Easy Money, Red Lights, The Imposter, Alps, Trishna, Ball Player, Politero, and Union Square. Red Lights is really good. So, um, I just want to say, if you have, um, if you live in a district or a part of the country where they make a lot of independent movies, uh, which is what I act in, invest in those movies. Go see them. They might only be shown in a theater near you. Other people in the country might never get to see them until they get to DVD or Netflix. And, well, that's why uh, I encourage you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Just to name one more good movie um, that is an independent film, uh, Winter's Bone. It is worth watching it. It is an awesome movie. Um, it is, it is real. The acting is awesome in it. It will scare you to death about methamphetamines, and you'll never touch them again. Um, and um, the book was good. The movie is better. So that's my little reel-in. Uh, if has anybody else have anything to say? Dominic, what's your favorite movie villain? Can I just add something? Sure. Um, I would do ask me before if this was a rema remix, whatever you call it, remake. I've been thinking about the movie with the uh, negotiator. I mean, it's a really old movie from, <laughs> from uh, it's, an, it's really old in the 90s, like from 98, somewhere around there. I want to see a remix of it, a remake of it, because it's pretty good. I mean, it's only one of them, so it would be nice to see what's going to happen now, or like a, a the negotiator. Movie. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I did like. Um, there is no bad guys in the movie, except you know, they will work together these two negotiators and. Right. So the guy that they're negotiating with is the, is the yeah, bad guy. Exactly. The FBI. Right? Okay. So it's Sort of. Yeah, yeah, that movie has, um, oh, God, um, the guy from Seven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and I think... Um, Samuel Jackson or Kevin Spacey played Samuel that. Jackson, doesn't yeah. it? Yes. yes. And Patrick, what is your favorite villain? Villain? Yes. Um, personally, I love all the... Um, Batman films, Batman trilogy, you know. Um, so I was thinking in the new Batman film, Lizard looks looks amazing. So um, okay. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, I think I think that he looks. I'm I'm really a bit of a geek into like, like uh, heroes and villains, and but my my favorite villain honestly would be I don't know the the comedy film Doctor Evil. From um, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, yeah. 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 Austin Powers. Austin Powers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the one, you know. So how about you? What's and your favorite villain? What? 
What's your favorite villain? Mine is Mark Michael Corleone. Oh. From Can The Godfather. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Dominic, yeah. favorite villain? My favorite villain is uh, that guy from Austin Powers. That goes like, uh, I want one hundred billion dollars. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I can't, hang on. I can't read your name. Do you have a favorite movie villain? Um, I'm not sure to be honest. I was thinking about that, but I don't think it's good. You can say the Joker from The Dark Knight. Okay. The Joker from The Dark Knight. Okay, that's three for The Joker of The Dark Knight today. Um... And then we have another person I joined, Swen. Yes, favorite, my name. Hello. Favorite movie Hello. villain, Swen. Uh, thanks, I'm fine. I'm from Germany. Yeah, okay, but we're talking about movies, and okay, so we're talking about favorite movie villain, favorite bad guy in the movie. Favorite bad guy in movies, okay. <laughs> Um, I just have to think about it. <laughs> okay, we'll give you a minute. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Let us know when you know. I just think okay, of one more. I did one five more. minutes to go, guys. I, I think one more villain um, that I enjoyed. Oh, I forgot his name. Oh, God. Come on, Earl. I can't remember. It was there and then it wasn't there. What movie? Uh, while you're thinking that. about it, while yeah. you're thinking about it, I'll, um, we've got another YouTube uh, response. Um, he says, Emperor Commodus in the Gladiators. Yes. In the Gladiator show. Ah, Commodus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he was. He, was he later one. portrayed Johnny Cash brilliantly. If you can consider... Uh, Samuel L. Jackson, Pulp Fiction, a villain. That would be one of my favorite movie villains. Yes, he is a villain in the movie. But then he's definitely my favorite okay. villain. Is it because of the passage? Um, no. The whole character, the whole... Uh, uh, I like that character. It was, it was. Do you find him believable? Um, yeah. To a certain level, I like the movie in general. Then several right. Okay. Yeah. So the, the reason I was asking is because my son is 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 inspiring to uh, to be like in productions and movie productions and all that. He wants to go to uh, some university in Florida. So this to me has been great because I I love to hear about it. So, what does he want to do in the movies? Um. He wants to, I don't think he wants to be like a producer or anything. I think he wants to be like in, like, um, I, I'm not exactly quite, quite sure. He's told you me that many, I... Okay, you have, you have actors, directors, producers, gaffers, sound guys, um, PAs, production assistants, uh, executive producers. I think he wants to work um, like with, with the PA systems and, and uh and No, a PA is a is a pers personal is assistant. A production production, production oh, assistant. No, I think he wants to work with the with the sound quality. Sound, and, okay. Yeah, and all that stuff. So that's yeah. that, I think that you know, whatever he wants to do, I'm I'm so he's going to White Sail. Is that where he wants to go? That's where he's going. Yeah. White Be careful. Sail. Why is that? <laughs> um, no, you can be honest with me. I take on. Well, okay. I don't want to put down White Sail. It's an awesome school, Full but it's a lot of money. It, yeah. It's a lot of money. Okay, and if you go around your universities where you live, they might have film schools right there. 
Yeah. I, I've been talking to him about that. But he's, uh, we he's, have, he's at, we have he's, two we have two film schools right here. Utah State and BYU. Brigham Young University. Two of the biggest film schools and then we have uh, the film school, Sundance, right, which was started by uh, Robert Redford. So we're down to three minutes, guys. Any other questions? Um, uh, what is the countdown for? I'm sorry. Oh, it's a sh live show. You're on a live show. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> So is there anything else you ever wanted to know about the movies but were afraid to ask? I have a question. Wow. Okay, Marin. Um, there's a movie I've been looking for for a very really long time. I don't know the title of it. It's about this girl who got killed in a small uh, water outside of their house because the, the mother remarried with this guy and she he killed her, and suddenly her daughter turns into this fairy when the clock strikes like three times. You can remember the movie, the title of the movie. Um, the movie ends that this, this her stepfather dies in the water the, the following day, like a few days after. I have oh, I I searched <laughs> so many years for the title. I have no idea where I saw this movie. I, I'm not making this up. It's an actual movie. I cannot remember the name of it. Is it an older movie? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think it's black or white. I don't think so. It was like... Because it's nothing I have ever seen. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> okay, then. I'm sorry. Maybe I dreamt it. I don't know. But if you saw it, so maybe... And, and I watch a lot of movies, but that doesn't ring any bells. <laughs> but it's okay. But, you know, I just wanted to try out, you know. I've been asking like a lot of forums, have you seen this movie, have you heard about this movie, and they always say like, is it called that, and then I make the research, and, and the plot doesn't say exactly what I'm looking for. So it's kind of a disappointment, but you know, like I said, you cannot know everything. But I, I, Your Google, yeah, I try Google to, can be very helpful that I, way. I, I try to Google it, like just try to put in like sentences. You know, Do you know he, any of the actors in the movie? That's a problem. No, I did not know any of the actresses. Oh. I just had the plot in my head. You know, it's kind of See, sad. If, you, if you don't know a movie, mm -hmm. but you know an actor that played in it, mm -hmm. go to the Internet Movie Database, IMDB. Type in the actor's name, and the whole list will appear of every movie he's ever been in. Okay. That's good. So that's how you can research your movies as well. Of course, but I will, so, I, will, I, will I will take your advice very closely and, and, and I go to Netflix. Uh, yes, <laughs> I know. I've been there on there. You spend you use so much time on there. Oh man. Sandra, I absolutely yeah. I absolutely love the Die Hard trilogy. I absolutely love it. From a small age, I I cannot you know I've seen every obviously I've seen every one of it. But I absolutely love them. Um, you know, so just want to let you know. Yeah, Die Hard. Yeah, My Bruce sons do it w as well. Bruce Willis is their action hero. Yeah, of course. And he's, yeah. he's it's it's just a really good. I don't know. It's just I just I just really really like them. They're just really 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 good. Um, of course I like Bruce Willis when he plays funny roles, but you know. I loved Bruce Willis in Red. Yeah. Have you seen the movie Red? I think so. Yes, yes, I have. Yes, yes. With the, I love him in that, and I can't wait to see him in Moonrise Kingdom. All right. Okay. Yeah. So funny parts, you know, kind of odd, where he plays kind of an oddball. That's when I like him best. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. So. Thank you, Sandra. Um, yeah. Um, Sally, did you come up with anything else? Any questions? Um, if we're talking about favorite movies or trilogies, the Godfather trilogy is definitely one of the can't best. Beat it. Can't beat it. Yeah. Can't beat it. Yeah. Except uh, for the Swedish girl with the dragon tattoo movies. The Swedish versions. Oh, I didn't watch that yet. Yes, I, and I did agree with you, Sandra, because the Swedish version was a lot better. 
a yeah. lot better. I even think I even think the dialogue was a lot better. Sometimes, if you take Hollywood out of the movie, you get a better movie. Sorry, Hollywood, but that's the truth. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I think we've come to the end of the show. Well, I'm just giving yeah, Sandra a big, it's a big way thing. past you four o'clock. It was Sandra. wonderful talking to you all. It was <laughs> wonderful. It was. It was a. It was my pleasure, Sandra. It was a Thank great you so first time. Thank you so much, Sandra. Thank you, guys. You can catch Sandra. You can catch Sandra same time next week, 10 p.m. Sorry, I said that again. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 10 p.m. UK time for anyone that's watching. And uh, please remember to check out our website www.hangoutshow.com. Or you can visit our YouTube channel and subscribe, which is The Hangout Show Live, all one word. My name is Carl. I'll see you guys next week. All right. Yeah. Great job, Sandra. Great job. Great job. Okay, I'm going to give you homework, though. Oh, I'm going to give you homework.